What's up everyone? C. Lawrence Hill from systemswithinsystem.com. All right, today we're gonna, doing a lot of different videos we've been putting up and getting them out there. We're gonna uh, do some on some hand technique and talk about uh, how it actually strikes. Now, this hand technique when we talk about the fist. The fist, you're never really gonna be hitting with your whole fist. Open hand fighting is, is the way to go in a Mortal Kombat. But even with the fist, or any uh, fighter will tell you that you're only hitting with a certain part of the fist. So it's not when you make a fist that you've got to hit with the first two knuckles. My father got into a fight many, many years ago when he was alive and hit somebody and actually pushed one of his knuckles back. So you kind of want to keep different parts of your fist that you're going to be hitting with. And we can get into that as well. Um, but today we're going to talk about open hand fighting, but I'll also try to give some demonstrations on how uh, to actually hit with the fist. So, on open hand fighting, there's the leopard paw, right, which is formed this way here, okay? So, all the fingers come in on itself and the thumb gets tucked in and you're hitting with this here. For that, the wrist has to be, it has to be tight and you're going to be hitting. You can angle it, you can come down a little bit with it, but it has to be tight when you're actually hitting with it. And it's not really that you're taking it and you're hitting and you're moving it into somebody. You're hitting, boom, and pulling it back. You can even extend, right, drop the two fingers down and extend these two, right, to come more with a, like a phoenix eye type of hit, but you're coming down this way. And a phoenix eye works the same thing where you can start to manipulate and it comes in from your leopard paw and come in from here, right, from here comes in and you're hitting with these two fingers, right? And they're coming in. It's very effective, and you can see where it is resting on the thumb, right? They're coming in, and they have that movability. Leopard paw comes here, and it comes all the way in. Leopard paw, and we'll do a quick demonstration of how these actually work. Leopard paw could come into your tiger claw. Now, your tiger claw, the hands aren't together. They're spread out, you spread them out as far as you can, and you gotta move them in. And you've got to create that little pouch, and that's actually what you're going to hit with or grab with. And the more for grabbing on to things. Your eagle claw is going to come in, right? All the fingers are together. You've got the little hook here, and you're coming in, and you're holding out, and you're hitting this way. They're also great for grabbing and hooking on to things as well, okay? And then there's another part of the eagle claw, which I call the hook hand, which I happen to use an awful lot, which is just the fingers coming in and the two fingers coming up and the hook coming around. And these are also for latching onto, right? So you've got your tiger claw, you've got your eagle claw, you've got your different hooks from this, you've got your leopard paw, you've got your double phoenix eye, your single phoenix eye, which rests on the thumb, right? Vic, is there any other basic ones that we need to cover? Uh, besides, we've already did on the praying mantis and crane and stuff like that, we talked about that, we did some demonstrations on it, uh, all this, the hook, this is a really cool one, right? And this latches on, which really allows you to work with the hand, the person's arm, and move around and hold on to things, right? And sometimes also from here, this comes down and hooks on as well. So it, it adds a lot more power to your hand when you're actually grabbing something, right? Now, when we talk about grabs, and we'll get into that as well, and how these work uh, down the line, a grab isn't something that you maintain, like you grab somebody and you hold them there. A grab is to manipulate an opponent. So if I'm grabbing this way, I'm not trying to hold them there, I'm going to manipulate that opponent, manipulate their movement. If I'm grabbing the holes, like I'm trying to restrain them, that's not really uh, what the combat is about. It's about moving from one stage of positioning to another stage of the positioning to make it work. Okay? So, <clears throat> Vic, can I call you out here a minute? Right? So, let's just take something real simple at first, and we'll take the leopard paw, which is this way, this kind of strike. So a leopard paw is um, coming out here, you see where I'm forming it from here, I'm coming in and I'm hitting, right? So as I hit with this, you see how it comes back? I also have the thumb out, so I can hit and come in here and hit with the thumb into the eye, as you can see, right, as I'm coming out, I can hook or just push it through. It's a nice way to get into the throat action, temple action, right? Even coming into some rib 
action, just hitting down, right? So, but it has to be, you can't take your hand and take it and lay it in. You can't push it in. So I see, I just watching something on uh, Instagram where a guy was doing like that one inch punch, and he's a big guy and he threw that punch, but you can see where he pushed the punch and the guy went flying. It's not about pushing the punch, it's about hitting and getting it back. That's really what creates the shock with. So if I'm standing here with a leopard claw, I can even come up with a dragon claw, which is this here. So if he's standing here and I come up with a dragon claw to move, then right from here I can form my leopard claw. This comes in and hits, you see? These dragon claws are moving this way, right? They're coming up this way. It's like a reverse leopard claw, but everything's down like you're doing a, a, a cow. Mm. <laughs> you're coming down this way with the others, right? You're coming down. So if I'm moving this way, you see where it could come in, boom, and come in with the leopard claw, how that works. So you could just start boom, moving in with these things, and they hit, then they're meant to hit and come back. I can take the leopard claw, just showing you different variations on a theme. I can take this leopard claw and come this way. Right? Come across and hit here. You see how it turns in? So I, I come here and I can come right across the bridge of the nose. Just boom, come in. I can also do that to the throat. I can come in here, 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 here. You see how you start to circle? So you have a lot of things to it. And basically you're hitting with this part of your hand. Or you could take it and switch it out. And I can come in and hit here. So my hit comes in this way, where I'm hooking right into the face. If I like to, I can come in here and just grab that ear as I'm coming through and hook in, right? Because they hook, and I could come in and hook. Again, close to like the, the uh, eagle claw, right? So the leopard claw, the hands are coming in, there's no gap. Eagle claw has a perch on it, like where you can perch and you hit. So this has a lot of grabbing effect from behind, right? It could come in and just come in and grab. You see how it comes to the throat and grabs. It can lock down and grab. Come in here where it hits. It's hitting here, and then the palm comes through. So the fingers are hitting, and the palm comes through. So I take this, and I'm hitting here. You see how I nail his hand? I nail his hand, and then right from here, I can come up with the leopard paw, leopard paw, or hook hand. <clears throat> hook hands I use a lot because they can also come around here, and so say he's got his defense up, I could hook this way, you see? Where I'm taking my hand, I'm hooking here with it, and I can move off of it, right? This is also this type of one we saw where I'm here. So now, as it goes to pull away, this is where I follow it, and I come in. And you see where I'm going to come right into here, and where you can hook with the thumb and whatnot. So this also has a nice strong grip on it, where you can really hold, so you can see. So as he moves away, I can move with him. And this is where boom, all the other movement comes in, where you follow movement in. You don't really want to hold on to somebody. You want to disconnect the energies. So you see where all this movement coming in, leopard claws, right? The different eagle claws. And the tiger claw, I think that's the last one we have to do, right? The tiger claw is a little bit scary. It has a lot of effect, but uh, and one of the things is, it's like years ago, I used to keep my nails warm and actually use it when I was doing a lot of fighting. Uh, and you would scratch the person's eyes and blood would go into their eyes and, and sweat and it would work. But today, you, you don't want, today things are different. You don't really want people bleeding on you. And you don't want all that stuff under your nails either. So it's more fingertips, right? It comes in this way. So if I'm hitting this way here, uh, um, I'm hitting like this here, you see? Right? So the hits coming in here, like the palm stretch we went over in, in previous videos with the Tai Chi. And then I'm forming this here. So when I form this here, I'm locking with my fingers and holding on. I'm locking with my fingers. So as I'm coming in, it's here, and I'm coming in with my fingers. So if I'm hitting here, boom, I lock it with my fingers, not my nails. So if I'm hitting, I can move this way without really scraping, scratching, but just kind of have that pull. Just boom, here, hit. And they are really nice for just holding and just see like now I'm doing this way right so when I'm grabbing the hand here I'm forming a tiger claw on the hand not an eagle claw eagle claw is this way you know tiger claw so all right we'll stay on this side you can see this is the eagle claw which cuts in right this is the tiger claw where I'm coming in here and then I'm just squeezing 
right? And it has a nice grip, right? You can feel that, right? It has a nice grip. Now, you have to remember, this is why I'm saying that when people are fighting in real life, when you're doing this, people's adrenaline is going. They're dependent on the level of fighting experience that they have and where they're at. And that pain or that cold, when you're standing there, you can feel that a little bit. You can feel the grip. It's just so that, you know, you can experience it a little bit, but you're not in real life combat going to be holding them there because he's not going to cater to that. He or she is not going to cater to that because everything's going and they're, they're fighting all out fighting. You can feel that enough to manipulate. I'm here and I can manipulate that move enough to move off of it, right? And they're comfortable with something else. And that's how you connect the dots. In the next videos that we're going to be doing, we're going to talk about that, we can remember it, right? How to work off of people's attacks, how to see people's attacks. And I'm going to have Vicar, one of my guys, actually launch some attacks and show how you're actually defending against those attacks without getting into this, if he throws a punch and you're doing this kind of blocking, and that doesn't really work uh, only, only in the movies. If he's throwing something here and I'm lined up to it, my block's got to come right from here. And that's really important to know, especially when you get into knife fighting or uh, any type of you know, weapon uh, coming at you and whatnot. Especially if the guy's you know, much bigger than you, the person in front of you is bigger than you, and you just start swinging like, like a crazy person. Is there anything else that we need to cover? No. Thank you. Good. So again, guys, thanks, Vic. Again, guys, you have, we did cover one other thing that I didn't cover when we did the separate ones, was the dragon paws, which come up this way. And we'll discuss how to actually use them. We got the tiger claws, we got the eagle claw, we got the other eagle claw, the hook hand, right? We got this, you know, I, I don't even know what I call this. <laughs> it reminds me of an ant just like grabbing and clipping on a thing, so, right? And, um, <clears throat> well, we had the uh, leopard paw, and we also had the phoenix eye. I use these a lot, actually. You know, they're really like the target in. A different place. Vic, can I call you out here just for, for, for a moment? So if Vic is standing here, let's, let's face on the, on the other side to do this. If Vic is standing here, he's got his hands up. You can see where this goes here. You see where I'm hitting here? So my hand is going right here. You see where I separate him a little bit? And I go right through this, then I take this and hit right into here. So boom, it just comes in. And I can just hit him down with it, up with it. It's just really powerful. But you want to make sure that you're holding it on to your thumb, you know, so it reinforces it, the hits. And then your hands become these, nice, Vic. Then these hands become these, these little tools. So you want to think like a surgeon. Once you get your hands inside something, you don't want to just pull them all the way back out and come in. You want to hit and work. So I'll be hitting, working, hitting, working, working. Everything stays here. Then you combine the chops. You combine, you know, the praying mantis. The Crane, all this stuff starts to come in. Bam, bam. And you really start attacking, have a lot of different ways of attacking. And we'll get into, on the next one, if you guys remember, or Vic remembers, we'll write it down. We'll get into how to line up your opponent and what you got to do. We talked a little bit about that command in your map, but more how to line up your opponent and block and what blocking really is with these types of techniques. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Roll and teach. Breathe.